welcome back to my channel for another video. So I haven't filmed a video in a long time, but there has been times where I filmed a video, but then I never ended up editing it and I didn't like it anymore or something like that and I didn't post it. So this is my first video that I filmed in a while. And if you haven't noticed, I did change the name of the channel because I actually changed my social media from Indigenous Book Club to Indian Book Nerd. And so now it's just kind of focused on my book reviews and recommendations and what I read versus as a book club as a whole. So today I'm going to be filming um, a video that has two parts to it. And one of it is um, some recent books that I've read and a book review on those books and then a TBR list. So what I plan on reading. And so I have a really big stack as you probably saw in the thumbnail. I have all of these beautiful books right here. And so some of these I have read and some of these are on my TBR. So first I'm going to start with the books that I have read and I'm going to try to go in order of most recently read. So those books are From the Tundra to the Trenches, Firekeeper's Daughter, and The Sentence. And all of these are indigenous authors. So the first book that I'm going to be reviewing, so I'm going to actually have two kind of reviews. So in the beginning, I'll just do a general review that doesn't give away like details or spoilers and then I will give you a warning and I'll put time span stamps for when I will do review that does spoilers because sometimes I like to listen and read reviews that don't give spoilers and then sometimes I like to do reviews that do give spoilers because I want to hear people's opinions about like major things that happen in the book. So this is the spoiler free version. So this is From the Tundra to the Trenches by Eddie Wieteltuk. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry. I will actually try to insert the correct way to say that. And this is a memoir. And so something about me is that I am obsessed with memoirs. That is probably like my fo most favorite genre besides fiction literature genre. Um, I just love reading people's life stories and like what they think about their life and reading people's childhood and like them looking back on their childhood is like really special. And so this book is about an Inuk um, war veteran from the 50s. He was actually drafted um, to fight in the Korean War. And um, he fights for the Canadian Army, and he's from the North. He's from James Bay. And this book is really all about, you know, his experiences being in the war, leaving the North, um, his experience being an Inuk, and traveling outside of where Inuit were forced to stay. And he ends up changing his identity um, or hiding his identity because he hears from so many people um, in Canada that Inuit are not allowed to leave the North. And so this whole book was about his experience in Vietnam, uh, sorry, not Vietnam, in Korea. And um, I really enjoyed this book. I would give this definitely four and a half stars, I think, out of five. I think it was a really good read. It was very interesting. Also, what I loved about this book is that it's paperback, but it has flaps. I've never had a book like that. I thought that was really cool. Um, I love using the flap to like as a bookmark. By the way, we have Quiet Quail books bookmarks now. So anyway, I really enjoyed this book. Um, if you're a fan of, you know, war recounting um, and... I don't know if you just like memoirs I think this one is so interesting and if you haven't read an Inuk author before I highly recommend like I said this 
Um, oh, actually, I don't think I said this. This is my second read by an Inuk author, and I just really love hearing their experiences because, you know, my people are from Southern California where it's really warm, and um, Inuk, in this case, are from the tundra where it's extremely cold and there's a lot of snow. Um, so, yeah, definitely check out this book. You know, it talks about his time going to boarding school. It talks about his time. Um, he also ends up going to Germany as well. Um, so, yeah. And also, the last thing I'll say without a spoiler is that if you're someone who, you know, is critical of war and critical of, um, you know, like major powers you know, having violent war, he definitely takes a critical eye to war, and he frequently throughout the book talks about, like, humanizing people who are supposed to be our enemies, and questioning, like, war and stuff like that, so that's why I was really grateful to read this book, because I don't really like consuming war media ever, um, unless it has, like, a critical eye to war and stuff like that. So highly recommend this book. Um, in terms of spoilers, so just saying it right now, I'm going to talk about spoilers in this book moving forward. Um, so in terms of spoilers, I would say that um, something that really frustrated me was um, the person who helped him, you know, make this novel come to life. Um, he's um, a professor and he talks about how hard it was for Eddie to get this published and like museums would like hoard his stuff basically and like string him along about publishing and then they would never actually publish it um so that was really frustrating another thing is that like throughout this book you know Eddie talks about how Inuit were not allowed to leave the north and, you know, he said that, you know, his friends would tell him that, the police would tell him that, um, the priests and stuff would tell him that. And I was kind of annoyed because in the foreword of the person opening this book was, like, kind of questioning that on if it was true. And he does, like, say, like, sociologically, it's true to Eddie. But, I mean, that's just true. Like, literally, he recounts multiple people telling him that in, as an Inuk, you cannot leave the North. And so I was like, why did you even have to call it into question? Like, it's just true. Like, everybody told him that multiple times. Um, other spoilers is that for sure, like one of the things that was hard to read, you know, was like kind of the sex tourism that was happening, you know, because they end up like being stationed in Japan for a while and then they're in Korea and then in Germany, but like especially in Japan, they end up doing like sex tourism a lot. And that is disturbing to read at some points because you're like, you know, just, you know, like major uh, Western forces kind of taking advantage of uh, women is like not comfortable to read. But then there's a point where Eddie like asks himself, like, what is it that we are doing, you know, taking advantage of these young women? and like just literally treating them as objects like he literally says that at some point so I did appreciate that um and what I thought was um interesting is like I said earlier you know there's points where he talks about like the enemy and is like they look like he says like I feel like they look like me and there's many times where he they like remind him of the Inuit because of like their sharing nature and just their behavior. So I really appreciated like hearing him talk about how, you know, it really is like such a social construct, the way that we propose certain people to be our enemy. Um, but yes, this was a really great read. I will say, however, that I wish that it talked about more of his time once he comes back from the military and it says in the book um on the back that like he ends up working in um 
kind of like counseling people for drug and addiction abuse and stuff it's something that he like experienced alcohol abuse a lot while he was in the military and I really wanted to read about that about like his time maybe mentoring younger people about drug awareness and stuff but they don't really talk about that so anyways that concludes my review definitely a great book okay so the next book that I'm going to be reviewing is a well-beloved internet book. I see this all the time everywhere. And I actually see this book outside, I see this book outside of the native bookstagram community and native booktube. And so I was like resisting reading it for a long time because I had read some reviews about it. But anyways, this is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boley. And in terms of stars, I would rate this a four out of five stars or like maybe a 3.7 out of five stars. Um, I did enjoy it. However, in the beginning, it was hard for me to get into. And I kind of shared on my Instagram how like, I don't know about y'all, but I personally am like not really interested in like nerdy girl, you know, kind of like plot tropes and stuff like that of like, oh my God, this girl is so smart. Like she's so much smarter than us. And like, I don't know, just like parts two where like the nerdy girl character just like spouts off like random facts and information. Like, I don't know, it just kind of feels like a one dimensional personality trait. And I don't know, it just kind of like irks me and just makes me feel ick. And maybe it's because like when I was younger, I was in the AP kid group and I could like see myself and maybe other people like building a personality over like we're the smart kids and like I don't know it's just like so outdated to me and like not enjoyable and that definitely happens in this book where she like just randomly says like science stuff and I'm just like okay <laughs> um so that's kind of why it was hard for me to get into it in the beginning but I will say this is a really good book um, in terms of like maybe getting you to enjoy reading again. Um, and I did like that she was a college student because I've complained before about how there's such a lack of media around college students. It seems like whenever anybody wants to make a show about youth, it's like they're in high school and that's it. Like, it's just high school, you know? Like, and there's so many shows that, like, their plots would be much better if they just put them in college, you know? Um, like, I feel that so much about, like, Euphoria and, like, so many other shows where, like, and especially when they have to do, like, whole plots around, like, they have to get home by a certain time and they have to ask permission. It's like, if you would just put them in college, you wouldn't have to worry about any of that. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, back to this book. Um, yeah, so this is like a mystery thriller and it's about an Ojibwe. I think she's like 18 or 19 year old and she finds out that there's like a really bad problem with drugs in her community and they're basically trying to solve like who is, you know, spreading the drugs in our community and how can we stop them basically. And, um, she ends up being like recruited to help this effort to stop and find whoever is contributing to the drug problem, right? Um, so that's what I will say in terms of the gist of the book without giving away any spoilers. Um, and I hope this just doesn't give away spoilers, but I just think the end was pretty unique and stuff like that. So I think that's really cool. Okay, now to give you a review with some spoilers. So warning, if you haven't read this and you don't want to hear the spoilers, skip ahead. Um, to give some spoilers, so the reviews that I had read about this book that made me not want to read it and I still feel similarly annoyed with this is that, you know, she ends up working with law enforcement, with cop, and she even ends up like falling in love with the cop and they end up like having like a relationship but like a secret relationship but then like a real relationship it's like really confusing um but anyway so 
I just didn't really like that aspect of like humanizing and like sympathizing with cops is like really frustrating in terms of, you know, how in reality what happens when they are in native and black and predominantly communities of color. So that was really frustrating. Um, I would say though, also like when you find out who it is that is, you know, distributing the drugs and stuff like that, and it ends up being her brother, it's just kind of like, okay, well, you know, it's one of those like, I don't know, sometimes it's really hard to like, when it's a mystery to like reveal who the person is because either it's who you're least expecting or who you're most expecting and either way it's like not <laughs> it's not surprising you know um so yeah but I will say what I did like about this book is the end um when it comes to concluding their relationship her and the cop I did like that they ended up like choosing to be apart so that they could like each grow individually and he could go off and do his studies, she could do her studies. Um, I thought that was a really nice ending and is kind of like a good example for young readers to be like, you know, when you're young, like, and you feel like you may have found the one, like, you don't have to immediately, like, jump into long-term relationships and marriage and stuff like that, you know, like, it's okay to choose what you have planned out for your path and um, hopefully in due time, you'll make your way back to each other. So there's that. And then the other thing that I did like about the book is when it kind of showed the ceremony that they have with each other when someone in their community has been assaulted, you know, um, and violated um, by a perpetrator. I just really enjoyed reading how like they have this healing circle together and stuff like that. So I did like this. Um, in some ways, but the cop thing is really annoying to me still. So, my last review and my, um, this book I read, like, I want to say in, like, July or something like that. Um, so this is The Sentence by Louise Erdrich, and I bought this, actually, in a buy one, get one sale at, um, uh, at Barnes and Noble. So that was really nice. Also the Firekeeper's Daughter book. I bought that at Target and then they let me go online and the price was even cheaper online. So I bought that book for 10 bucks, which is really good for a hardcover. But anyways, um, this sentence, this book, I would give five stars for sure. This is like one of my most favorite fiction reads that I've read this year by far. Um, Louise Erdrich was some of the first Native authors that I started reading, and I started my journey of reading Native authors in 2019, and then I started Indian Book Nerd and everything in 2020. Um, but this book, generally the plot is, it's about Tuki, who is a Chippewa or Ojibwe Native who's living in Minneapolis in Minnesota, and she ends up going to prison for, unbeknownst to her, like committing a crime with her friend. And then she ends up getting out of prison and she ends up working for a native owned bookstore in Minneapolis. And eventually she comes to find that one of the frequent customers passes away and that customer ends up haunting Tuki, like in the bookstore. Um, and kind of meddling with her and her life and stuff. And so, you know, the whole book is about her figuring out why is she being haunted and trying to get it at stop and stuff like that. And it also takes place in 2020. So you get to read about like what was going on with the pandemic and the George Floyd protests and all that stuff. Um, and I just really love the writing style. I thought it was so interesting. It all takes place from Tuki's perspective. Um, I thought that there were really unique characters. As someone who owns a bookstore, I think it's so cute reading a story like this, you know? So I really, really, really enjoyed this book. Um, so yeah, five stars, I highly recommend. Um, I think it's like an enjoyable read and it's not too intense. I personally love books that are like much more realistic. Like 
I can't get into sci-fi or like futuristic type of stuff and fantasy I just really love like normal life <laughs> and this is like such normal life so I mean obviously haunting is not super normal in our lives but like other than that it's very similar to like normal life now I will give spoilers about the sentence so if you haven't read it and don't want to hear the spoilers skip ahead so some of my favorite things about this book was definitely the ending and so throughout the book you don't know why I think her name's Flora is haunting Tuki and throughout the book you're made to be annoyed by Flora because she like definitely like fetishizes native people and she seems like a pretend Indian basically you know saying that she has native ancestry and she's just like annoying like she's just pestering Tuki and stuff like that it seems like nobody really likes her but the ending to me was like super shocking I don't think that I actually anticipated it maybe other people did but my brain was not there it ends up being that Flora you know um was related to Tuki and the person who this book that Tuki finds that Flora was reading was related to Tuki as well and so Tuki in the end to get rid of Flora has to reconcile with this multiple identity that she has as an Ojibwe woman and being a descendant of you know these other settlers that have committed some type of harm and stuff like that and I just thought that was like such an interesting ending to the story um I will say having most of us who are watching this video experience 2020, experience the pandemic, experiencing the George Floyd protests, it is kind of hard to like consume that media because we all remember how hard that time was and how stressful it was and how like doomsday it felt and how enraged and like, you know, stuck we were feeling. But having read this like two years after that for me at least it like wasn't as fresh if I had maybe read this like soon after that I probably would have been like I don't want to read this because I'm like living through this you know like there's been times where pandemic stuff came on tv like in fictional shows and I was like this is annoying I, I don't want to watch this like I'm living this you know um so anyways that was some of my favorite things about this book and also, like, if you don't know, Louise Erdrich owns a native bookstore. It's pretty much based off of that, like, in Minneapolis. Like, that's kind of what the story is based off of. And she, like, writes herself into the book because the owners of the bookstore, her name is Louise, and she loves to write. And so I thought that was really cute of Louise Erdrich to do that. But anyways, yes, this was a really good read. And I also want to listen to the audiobook because I heard that it was voiced by Louise Erdrich. Um, and if you didn't know, Quiet Quill Books is actually now on Libro.fm, so you can get your audiobooks from there, and it supports independent booksellers rather than Amazon, who runs books bookstores out of town and doesn't, you know, doesn't help authors and publishers and stuff like that. So that is the conclusion of my review of the sentence. So this video is already getting long. So I'm going to try to keep this ending short and sweet. And I'm basically going to talk about the books that are next on my to be read list. And so the first one is called This is Paradise by Christiana Kahaka. Oh my God, this font is like making it hard for me to read. Um, I can't read this font. Um, anyways, I will leave all of this in the description but this is by a native Hawaiian author and I have to say I am ashamed to admit that I haven't read a book by a native Hawaiian author in a really long time and the only one that I can think of is The Seeds That We Planted and I didn't fully finish that book so I don't really know if it should count um and I actually think that this is um I actually think that this is fiction um and I have never read a native Hawaiian authored fiction book before and so that's why I really wanted to read this in case anybody came to my store asking for recommendations on that thing I would choose this um my next book this will probably be for sure the next book that I'm reading is called Black Indian it's a memoir by Shonda Buchanan I hope I'm saying their name right and it just is exactly what it sounds like 
It's a memoir of um, a black indigenous person's experience. And I, you know me, I'm obsessed with memoirs. I can't wait to read this and, you know, hear from her firsthand of what her experiences is like. Um, and same as the other book, um, I want to be able to recommend when people come to my book, to my bookstore looking for black indigenous perspectives, I can point them towards this book and be like, I actually read that and it's a good book. Um, so that's why I really want to read this book. And also I'm just interested into it because I love memoirs. And this was actually recommended to me from, um, my a uh, black indigenous friend who I believe is Lakota and she left this um, or they left this book recommendation in our discord before and so that's why I thought this would be a really great book to read. Um, so yeah super excited about that and then the last one that I'm hoping to read is a comic book and it's called Redbone the true story of a Native American rock band and it's exactly what it sounds like if you've heard the hit single, Come and Get Your Love, Come and Get Your Love, I can't sing, um, but it's a very popular song, and it was actually written by a Native American rock band, Redbone, um, and I haven't fully, I don't know if I've ever fully, like, read and finished a comic before, um, but this looks like the kind that I would enjoy. So, those are all of my recent read reads and reviews and the next books that I'm hoping to finish the year with I'm not the quickest reader you know um which is kind of sad as a bookstagrammer because I feel like I see so many bookstagrammers and booktubers who read super fast I don't read very fast um like I read physically fast but in terms of finishing a book like I don't finish a book very fast so anyways, I hope that you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below telling me what your recent reads are, what you thought of them. If you've read any of these books, please feel free to give me your feelings about them, um, what you enjoyed about them. Unless it's my TBR, please tell me if you like them, but like, please don't spoil it for me without a warning. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoy and I hope to make some more videos soon. So I will see you in my next video.